I'm Maddie, and this is Bean, and today we're going to be talking about moduli spaces. Moduli spaces are spaces whose points correspond to some object of interest. As a quick example, we might be interested in smiley faces. The moduli space gives you a map of where different smiley faces live, and smiley faces that are close together look similar, while smiley faces that are farther away look different. And if we look to the boundary, then we'll find degenerate smiley faces. Today, I'll do two examples. One will be of line segments, so we'll look at the moduli space of line segments, and the other example will be of triangles. So let's start with the line segments. So we'll say that two line segments in the plane are the same if they have the same length. So if you can take one line segment and move it rigidly around to match up with some other line segment, then those are the same line segment. Let's look at, out of all of the real numbers, which ones are possibly lengths of line segments. We can't have zero as the length of a line segment, but any other positive real number can be the length of a line segment. So for example, one could be the length of a line segment, and it would look like this. As another example, the square root of 17 could also be the length of a line segment, and it would look like this. Our moduli space is this blue ray where we don't include zero. Okay, but every other point on there corresponds to a line segment of that length. If we look towards the boundary of the moduli space, we can sort of think about what that point might correspond to. So for example, at um, the point zero, that might be something like a line segment of length zero. And if we look really, really far out to infinity, then we'll be looking at a line segment of length infinity. So we were interested in the object line segments, and we found that we could record for each one a number, which was its length, and that told you um, which point in the moduli space that line segment corresponded to. Now let's do a slightly more complicated example of triangles. So we'll say that two triangles are the same if they're similar. This means that I can take my triangle and I can zoom in on it or rotate it or shrink it. But as long as they only differ by scaling, then those two triangles are similar. And I'll quickly just write here the names of a couple of theorems that you might remember for showing that two triangles are similar. How do we make a moduli space of triangles? We need to figure out how to take each triangle and sort of scale it and rotate it into some fixed position so that um, we can compare two triangles to see when they're similar. What we'll do is we'll first scale and rotate so that the shortest side of the triangle is the line segment 0, 0 to 0, 1. So we're just going to pick our triangle up, find the shortest side, rotate it, so that that side is vertical, and then scale the entire triangle so that the shortest side is zero, zero to zero, one. Now, let's think about the other points in the plane as being possible locations of the third vertex. So if I put another point in somewhere in the plane, then that gives me a triangle. We said that the shortest side was the one that was going to be vertical. Our third vertex can't come within distance one of either of the first two vertices, because that would make a new side that was shorter than the side that we said was the shortest. So our points have to come from outside of these two circles. What happens if the point comes from the left half of the plane? If the point comes from the left half of the plane, then we could just flip the triangle to the right half of the plane. These two triangles are similar, so we can ignore the points coming from the left half of the plane since we want our moduli space to only have one point for each similar triangle. What happens with the points on this line? If we look at the two triangles corresponding to points from either side of this line, these are also similar triangles, again, by flipping. For similar reasons as before, we're just going to look at triangles coming from taking points that are above this light gray line. That leaves us with this blue region. Let's look at what the triangles in there correspond to. Points along this blue, this bottom blue line correspond to isosceles triangles with short bases. The pink point here corresponds to the equilateral triangle. Points along this blue curve 
correspond to triangles with wide bases. What about points along this vertical dotted line? Well, these would correspond to three points that are in a line, so these actually aren't triangles. We say that these are degenerate. These points are not included in our moduli space. Let's see what some of these look like. So the point along the bottom blue line is an isosceles triangle with a short base. Then we have the equilateral triangle, and then we have isosceles triangles with wide bases. If I take a random point from out in the middle of the blue region, then we get triangles that look like this. And finally, let's talk about some other classes of triangles that you might be familiar with. So for example, right triangles live along this blue line. This divides the blue region into two different areas. The lower one corresponds to acute triangles, and the upper one corresponds to obtuse triangles. Moduli spaces help mathematicians map the objects that they're interested in. So objects that are near to each other will have similar properties, and objects that are far apart will be different from each other. The shape of the moduli space can actually teach you a lot about the objects that you're interested in. The boundary contains degenerate objects that can be interesting to study in their own right. I hope you learned something about moduli spaces today, and thanks for watching.